In the shadow of Mount Vesuvius, destroyer of Pompeii, a labyrinth of underground tunnels continues to mystify. This tunnel entrance looks like something straight out of Lord of the Rings. It takes you deep under a mountain and it looks like you're entering Mordor. A location like this was surrounded by a lot of myth and mystery. Symbolically, it certainly seems like an entrance to the underworld. Evidence suggests this tunnel complex was purposely filled in, its secrets left buried for thousands of years. Yet, investigations are unearthing clues that this was some kind of ritual center. There's a kind of feeling of showmanship. This is not just an access A to B tunnel. This complex network of caverns and tunnels was so extensive that clearly some incredible engineering happened here. There was also a mysterious oracle, an oracle of the dead, the entrance to the underworld. This subterranean network is somehow connected to a grand complex of ruins above. It was meticulously built with a massive amount of difficult engineering of tunnels and waterways, columns, frescoes, mosaics. Above ground, it looks so palatial that you couldn't help but wonder what this was for or who it was for. This site is connected to some of the most famous names in human history. But why did they come here? And what secrets are held beneath this mountain? Descending under the sister volcano of Mount Vesuvius is a mesmerizing tunnel. Purposely filled in, the secrets contained at the base of this mountain remained dormant for thousands of years until a dramatic discovery was made in the 1960s, as caver Graziano Ferrari explains. This place uh, was left abandoned for nearly 2,000 years. We knew that these British and American researchers started investigating in about 1960. In the 1960s, you've got a big local NATO base, and all sorts of people are working there, including a chap whose hobby was archaeology. And he found this site. This amateur archaeologist was Robert Paget, and he realized he'd stumbled onto something hugely significant. He read up about it, and then the next 10 years spent digging out these tunnels. And in that 10 years, he came up with the most incredible theories. Paget was convinced this passage was part of an elaborate ceremonial site. So we had to check their uh, conclusions and actually to re-explore again, because for nearly 50 more years, the place was left, was abandoned again. It looks ancient and otherworldly, and at times is extremely narrow, barely shoulder width. And you have to descend down these ladders with gas analyzers. It's actually really frightening. Someone's put a lot of work into this. There are niches for candles as you go down. Not just enough to light the way, but enough to make a massive impact. This is some serious illumination going on here. Amateur archaeologist Robert Paget believed the tunnel's design backed up his theory that it was more than simply functional, but part of something ritualistic. It's also not straightforward. If you go down into this tunnel, very narrow, you have to turn your shoulders. It doesn't actually lead you straight to where you're going. It's curved. It snakes around a little bit. As the tunnel takes on a steeper gradient and curves, there is a sense of the theatrical in this journey. The point of the journey is partly in this kind of curve, in this showmanship. And then it's getting hotter in there. You can kind of feel the volcanic activity. You can feel that this is getting into the depths of the earth. And the smell is kind of sulfurous, but exciting. But what was the purpose of this journey? And where does this tunnel lead? The tunnel comes across this small underground stream. It's really a, a hot spring. But in the mythology, perhaps it was a representation of the famous river Styx that the dead would have to be transported across on their way to the underworld. 
This pool of hot water was once a flowing river, believed by some to be the River Styx. In Greek mythology, the border between the world of the living and the underworld, known as Hades. Paget believed there might be a landing stage where boats could pull up to take people across to the other side. The channel in which we walk in it continues under the water. Presently, we don't know what is on the other side. This is one of the mysteries of this fantastic cave. Above the pool, however, is a filled-in chamber or hidden sanctuary. This led Paget to conclude the whole design of this cavernous system was meant to mimic a visit to the underworld. He was convinced he'd stumbled upon the so-called Oracle of the Dead. In both the Greek and the Roman eras, people believed that in certain locations like this, there was a special type of a priestess, an oracle, who could tell your future. People would descend to the sweltering depths to hear prophecy and have their future read by this priestess. Investigators believe they may have unlocked some of the mysteries surrounding these oracles. Today, there is a, a theory that many of these oracles were actually in locations where, in fact, there were fumes coming out of the earth that would lead any person to begin to hallucinate or to have out-of-body experiences. And the priestesses of the area kind of played on that, and if they were using the sulfurous fumes and the sheer theater of the experience, then perhaps I'd fall for it today, just as people did 2,000 years ago. Some of the tunnels and cavernous rooms remain a mystery to this day. Others, however, provide a clue to the connection with the ruined site above. This was the steam channel intended to bring the steam under this space, under this false floor. For current investigator Graziano, the subterranean tunnels served a purely functional purpose. This was, in modern terms, a steam room and part of a wider complex designed to exploit the geology of the region. The whole complex was engineered to let visitors take advantage of all this volcanic heat and hot water. There were steam rooms, there were hot tubs, there were also cold pools, all of them connected, all of them clearly part of some kind of health-giving ritual. This is Baia Archaeological Park, once a Roman spa town. The whole complex was a luxurious resort for the Roman elite. You had beautiful mosaics along the walkways, frescoes painted on the walls. An enormous amount of work and artistry went into building this complex. Chambers and tanks interconnected with tunnels and underground steam channels, complete with waterproof lining, created a complex hydraulic system. Domes such as the Temple of Diana, which is older than the Pantheon in Rome, functioned as cold baths. Other features include sunning rooms and swimming pools on the terraces, with dramatic views across the bay. Baia became notorious for that hedonistic lifestyle. It really became an area of scandalous immorality. We know from the records that Caesar and Cicero frequently visited there. I mean, it was a playground for the rich and famous. So how and why did this extraordinary and famous resort meet its end? Ultimately, this site's abandonment brings us back to the land. The reason this site is here is because of the thermal seismic activity. That was a big part of its downfall. Here in the Phlegreon fields, we had a slow raising and lowering of the land due to volcanic action. One day it all went too far, and parts of the resort started to slip underwater. And when that happened, the writing was on the wall. Today, this remarkable site is open to the public, yet remains largely unknown to tourists. 
Meanwhile, investigators such as Graziano continue to delve into the mysteries held in this remarkable complex. This is over 2,000 years old, and yet you can imagine people coming here for that luxury experience. The joy of the archaeology here is immense, and the stories behind it, well, they could have happened yesterday. <laughs>